recording. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I will respond as soon as I can. Okay, so now we're gonna look at section 10.2, part two, which is basically applications or story problems using the quadratic formula. All right, first of all, I wanna talk about something called the Pythagorean theorem. And what that says is this, if you have a triangle that has a right angle or a 90 degree angle, so it's called a right triangle, the longest side is called the hypotenuse, I have no idea if I spelled that right. Probably not. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, well, I'll be a disgrace to my colleagues if I spelled it incorrectly. But we'll just say that it's the longest side, OK? The other two sides are called the legs. So we've got two legs and the hypotenuse. Typically, these are labeled A, B, and C. C is always the hypotenuse, always the longest side, the side across from the right angle. A and B are the two legs. The following formula is true. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the length of A squared plus the length of B squared equals the length of C squared. This is called the Pythagorean theorem. It's used a lot in construction, I'm told. Okay, now, here we have a problem. It says, the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 2.5 units long. The longer leg is 1.7 units, units longer than the shorter leg. Find the lengths of the legs of the triangle. Okay, so we've got a right triangle. I love these straight lines here. Okay, the hypotenuse is 2.5 units long. So this is 2.5 units, okay. The longer leg is 1.7 units longer than the shorter leg. The longer leg is being compared to the shorter leg. So let's call the shorter leg X. Then the longer leg would be X plus 1.7 units. Okay, so we have a right triangle. The three sides are 2.5 units for the hypotenuse, X for the shorter leg, X plus 1.7 units for the longer leg. Any questions about how I got to there? All right, so we're gonna call this A and this B and this C. So using A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we get the following. We get x plus 1.7 squared plus x squared equals 2.5 squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, any questions how I got to that point? All right, so x plus 1.7 times x plus 1.7 plus x times x equals, let's see, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25, okay? And what do we have here? Foiling this, we've got x squared plus 1.7x plus 1.7x plus, let's see, 1.7 times 1.7 is 2.89, and that equals 6.25, okay? Combining like terms, x squared plus, let's see, 1.7 plus 1.7 is 3.4, so that's 3.4x plus 2.89 equals 6.25. 
Okay. Again, oh, what did I do? I forgot the x squared, didn't I? Mm-hmm. So let's do this here. So this is what plus 2.89 and then plus x squared, right? So then we have 2x squared, don't we? Yeah, I was so busy foiling those x plus 1.7s together, I forgot all about that x squared. I've made that mistake before. You think I would have learned by now. All right, any questions so far? So this is a second degree equation. So I'm gonna put it in standard form. I'm gonna subtract 6.25 from both sides of the equation. So that's gonna give me 2x squared plus 3.4x. And then let's see here, if I take 2.89 minus 6.25, that gives me minus 3.36 equals zero, okay? Now, I can live with the decimals or I can get rid of them. I'm going to choose to get rid of them. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Okay? So that's going to give me 200x squared plus 344x minus 336 equals zero. Any questions there? So I've gotten rid of the decimals. And again, it's a matter of, you know, how much time do you want to spend cleaning it up to make it easier to plug in or just go for it? But for instance, here, I can see that all my coefficients, A, B, and C, they're all even. In fact, not only there are they even, but four goes into all of them. So if I were to divide, I'm going to divide each term by four. So what did I do? I multiplied by 100 and then divided by 4. I suppose I could have just multiplied by 25, but that might not have been easy to see up front. So I've got 50x squared plus, let's see here, what is 344 divided by 4 is 86x minus 336 divided by 4, 84 equals 0. Is that right? 336 divided by 4, 344 divided by 4. Hmm. I could reduce it down even further, couldn't I? Well, what the heck? Let's do it. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. 25x squared plus 43x minus 42 equals 0. Well, if I haven't made any mistakes, we're that far. You know what? Because I made a mistake earlier, I'm going to kind of just double check this for a minute. Let's see, x plus 1.7, x squared, that, that, 289, 3.4, that, uh, two of those. Okay, subtract that, multiply by 100, over 2, over 2, divide by 4, divide by 2. I think we're good to go. So I'm going to take this and go to the next page, 25x squared plus 43x minus 42 equals zero. Okay, wow. Let's use the quadratic formula. I don't know, I just have this bad feeling that, this, that I've messed up somewhere, but we'll find out. A is 25, B is 43, C is negative 42, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. X equals negative 43 plus or minus the square root of, well, uh, let's see here, 43 squared is 1849. And then we've got minus 4 times 25 would be minus 100. In minus 100 times minus 42 would be plus 4,200 all over 50. X equals negative 43 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, four, 1849 plus 4,200 is 6,049 divided by 50. 
All right, now let's see if 6,049 is a perfect square. Square root of 6,049. Oh, it's not. And it's supposed to be. So I've messed up somewhere. Oh, uh, yes. It's supposed to come out exact. So let's go back and let's again see if we can find my mis our mistake. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to pause. The Good news, I found the mistake. I put a four over there where I've got it circled in red, and that's supposed to be 340. So that was my mistake. Now, everything on the left is divisible by four. So I get 50x squared plus, let's see here, 340 divided by four equals 85x minus 336 divided by four minus 84 equals zero. I knew something was wrong because I've done this problem a hundred times. You'd think I'd get it right by now. Okay, so now we're gonna take this. 50x squared plus 85x minus 84 equals zero. And now we're gonna put that into the quadratic formula. That's the awful thing about math, isn't it? If you make one little mistake, it haunts you the rest of the problem. Okay, so A is 50, B is 85, C is negative 84, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A C all over two A. X equals negative 85 plus or minus the square root of, okay, so we've got 85 times 85, which is 7225. And then we've got minus four times 50, which would be negative 200 times negative 84, which is gonna be positive. So we've got four times 50, four times 50, which is 200 times 84. And it's positive, right? Because negative times positive times negative, 16,800 all over 100. X is negative 85 plus or minus the square root of, so 16,800 plus 7,225 is 24,025 all over 100. X equals negative 85 plus or minus. Let's see if 24,025 is a perfect square. Yes, it is. That's how I knew I had a mistake because I knew it because the answer is an exact number. It didn't say round off, so I figured it came out nicely. Okay, so X is negative 85 plus 155 over 100 or x is negative 85 minus 155 over 100. So parentheses, negative 85, parentheses, negative 85 plus 155, close it up, divided by 100 is 0.7. Then if we take negative 85 minus 155, divided by 100, we get negative 2.4. Okay, now, what are we trying to find? Does anybody even remember? We're trying to find basically X so that we can come back and find the length of those sides. Well, if X is a distance, it can't be negative. So even though the model we created produced a negative solution as one of the options, it doesn't fit the actual problem involving distances. So the only legitimate answer here is 0.7 for x. So this would be 0.7, and this would be what? 1.7 plus 0.7 is 2.4 units. So it said, find the lengths of the legs. One of them is 0.7 units, and one of them is 2.4 units. And my apologies for adding a four where it should have been a zero. Okay, we're gonna go on to another problem. Any questions before we do? 
All right. Okay. This says IMAX screens, the largest permanent movie screen, at least at the time of this publishing, is in the Panasonic IMAX theater in Darling Harbor, Sydney, Australia. The rectangular screen, okay, so we're not dealing with a triangle, we're dealing with a rectangle this time, has an area of 11,349 square feet. So the area, area equals 11,000, 349 square feet. Okay. Find the dimensions of the screen if it is 20 feet longer than it is wide. So let's call the width X and the length X plus 20 feet. Okay. Because it says that the, uh, the screen is 20 feet longer than it is wide. Okay. So the area is 11,349 square feet. The width, so width is going to be x, and length is going to be x plus 20 feet. All right, now we're not dealing with a triangle. We're not dealing with the Pythagorean theorem. We're dealing with a rectangle and area. So the area is what? Length times width. So the area, which is 11,349, equals the length, x plus 20 times the width x. So there is our equation. All right, let's simplify it. Let's see here, we're going to distribute. We're gonna get x squared plus 20x on the right. I am now going to subtract 11,349 from both sides. So I get, Zero equals x squared plus 20x minus 11,349. Okay, there's really nothing I can do to simplify that equation. So A is one, B is 20, and C is negative 11,349. Okay. And let's see here. X equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. x equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 400. Negative times positive times negative is going to be positive. Four times one is four, and then I've got four times 11,349, which is 45396 all over two. So X equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 45396 plus 400 is 45,796 all over two. I know these numbers are huge, aren't they? All right, and we're gonna take that. Square root comes out 214 all over two. So X is negative 20 plus 214 over two. X is negative 20 minus 214 over two. So let's see here, negative 20 plus 214 would be 194 divided by two is 97. Negative 20 minus 214 is negative 234 divided by two is negative 117. Once again, we have a situation where the, one of the answers is negative, but we're looking at distances which can't be negative. Now, that doesn't mean you always throw out the negative solution. It just means that if a solution doesn't fit the context of the problem, if you're looking for a distance, a length, or time, they can't be negative. So if, 90, if uh, x is 97, this would be 97 feet, and this would be what, 97 plus 20, which would be 117 feet. 
So the dimensions would be what 97 feet by 117 feet. All right. Any questions about that problem? Okay, I've got another fun one for you. Fun for whom, you say? All right, what we've got here is we've got a picture inside of a frame, okay? And let's see. This is a picture of a sailboat on a lake and there's some clouds and trees and all that good stuff. Okay, now, what they tell us, it says the matting around the picture has a uniform length. So this distance here and here and here and here, that distance, the, the width of the matting is the same all the way around the picture, okay? So the matting around the picture has a uniform width. How wide is the matting? So basically we're trying to figure out this value, we'll call it X. If its area equals the area of the picture. Now, they also tell us the following information. They tell us that, let's see here, let's do this simply. This distance to this distance is five, oops, that's not very nice, is five inches. So from here to there, okay? And they tell us that this distance is four inches. So basically what we've got is we've got a picture that's five inches by four inches. So the area would be 20, square inches, okay? So just the picture inside, not the matting outside. It says, how wide is the matting if its area equals the area of the picture? Okay, so that means that the total area, we're gonna say total area equals 20 square inches for the, for the picture plus 20 square inches for the matting, which is 40 square inches, okay? So the total area is 40 square inches. Now, let's take a look at this distance right there. What is that? Well, it's what? X plus X plus five inches. Do you see where I got that? Is anyone still even there? Everybody left? Okay. And then you've got this area right here, or this distance right here, which is what? It's X plus X plus four inches. So that's two X plus four inches. So what does that mean? The area of the whole thing, 40, is the length times the width, okay? So 40 equals 4x squared plus 8x plus 10x plus 20. 40 equals 4x squared plus 18x plus 20. Subtract 40 from both sides. Zero equals 4x squared plus 18x minus 20. Ah, they're all even. Let's divide everybody by two. Zero equals 2x squared plus 9x minus 10. Let's take that equation and go to the next page. Zero equals 2x squared plus 9x minus 10, okay? So A is two, B is nine, C is negative 10. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. 
x equals negative nine plus or minus the square root of 81 plus 80 all over four. X equals negative nine plus or minus the square root of 161 all over four. Now, this one says round to the nearest hundredth of an inch, okay? So I've got x equals negative nine plus the square root of 161 over four. X equals negative nine minus the square root of 161 over four. And let's do the approximation on those. So parentheses, negative nine plus the square root, eh, the square root of 161, close it up, close the whole thing up, divide it by four. And I come up with, uh, what do I come up with? 0 0.922, so rounding to the nearest hundredth, 0.92 and that's inches. If I do the negative, well, I'm going to get negative five point something. Again, we're dealing with a distance, so that's not going to work. So x is 0.92 inches. That's the width of the picture frame. Okay. Let's see here. I think I've tortured you enough for one day. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And for tonight, you've got section 10.1 and then 10.2 part one and 10.2 part two. All righty. So we'll stop the recording.